Catherine Alexbenia, known as the first woman to rule Imperial Russia, was born on April 15, 1684, with the given name Marta Helena. She was the daughter of a Roman Catholic peasant in the Commonwealth of Poland, Lithuania, and was adopted by a Lutheran pastor after her parents' death from the plague. Throughout her adolescent and young adult life, she worked as a household maid and servant. She briefly worked in the laundry room in the Russian regiment at the age of 17 and married a member of the Swedish military unit for only eight days. She was rumored to be affiliated with the future governor of Estonia and later worked in one of the wealthiest and influential households in Russia. She traveled with his army until she caught the eye of Prince Menshikov. Though Prince Menshikov married his fiancée, Catherine charmed his best friend, the co-ruler of Russia, Peter the Great, during a visit. She became his mistress, and in 1698, Peter the Great sentenced his first wife to a monastery. In 1703, Catherine gave birth to Alexei, her first son, and converted to Orthodox Christianity. There was a strong affection throughout their marriage, and she was acknowledged to be the only individual capable of coming here. Catherine accompanied Peter during his journeys, and in 1711, she famously saved Russia from the Ottoman Empire. Despite the anticipated event of Russia's surrender, she bribed the Ottoman vizier to accept Russia's retreat instead. Catherine became the wife of Peter the Great in 1712, and in 1724, she was crowned Empress of Russia. After her husband's death, she continued his legacy in maintaining internal reforms in administration, commerce, industry, and culture until her death the following year. lineage, Anna Ivanova was a niece of Peter the Great and the daughter of Ivan V. Anna was raised by her mother in Moscow, and her education primarily consisted of folklore and religious texts. Despite her mother's attempt to enforce a traditional Russian lifestyle, the family relocated to St. Petersburg after an order from Peter the Great. Throughout her adolescent life, she was given the name Ivyanna the Terrible due to her lack of manners, vulgar attitude, and unattractiveness, in addition to her crud sense of humor and cruelty. After the death of her husband, Frederick William, she inherited his title and became the Duchess of Portland. After the death of the Tsar, she was crowned Empress as the courts believed she'd be easily manipulated. Anna's reign was known as the Dark Era. Public executions were implemented, and cruel punishments were publicized for personal entertainment. Her reign was also coined the Age of Byron due to the prominent German influence in Russian politics. Affairs were handled by Ernest Byron, her German romantic interest, along with the head of Chamberlain and the chief of the army. War expenses from the Russo-Turkish War heavily taxed peasantry class and 100,000 men were lost due to unsuccessful expansion. During her reign, Anna established the Secret Search Chancellery, the supreme body of political investigation, which used torture, death, and exile. In addition, Anna stacked German foreigners in the regiments and office positions due to mistrust in the former guards. Serfdom was expanded, and in 1736, all workers of the industrial enterprises were declared property of their owners. The foundation of Anna's reign consisted of failed territorial expansion, scrutiny, and corruption, it is noted that it also had economic development and trade, and advancements in the arts. Iron production became one of Russia's biggest exports and Russia became the world leader in iron production. St. Peter and Paul Cathedral were built along with the 12 colleges building and the Church of Simons. The prominence of Russian ballet throughout the world can be credited to Anna, as the first public performance was dedicated and crafted for her by Sean Londay, the dance master of Military Academy. Opera also emerged when composer Francesco Araja became the director in the newly established opera company in St. Petersburg. After the death of Empress Anna, the title was passed on to Ivan VI, her son then to Elizabeth, the third daughter of Tsar Peter the Great. Elizabeth received limited education as schooling was more heavily encouraged within her brothers. However, she was fluent in French, Italian, and German. During the reign of Empress Anna, support within the royal community diminished as they disagreed with the policies implemented by Anna. Because German domination continued during the reign of Ivan VI, popularity towards Elizabeth increased. Elizabeth gained support among the Russian nobles and guards, and in 1781, she led a coup against the one-year-old Tsar. The son of Anna was banished to Siberia, and at the age of 33, Elizabeth became the ruler of Russia. The reign of Elizabeth I was known as the Age of Enrichment due to the modernization and cultural revival brought back into Russian society. Foreign personnel appointed by Empress Anna were shortly replaced with Russian nobles, and the traditional principles and policies upheld by Peter the Great were re-established. The cabinet of ministers was abolished, and the importance of the Senate was re-established. Elizabeth I was also known for her peaceful reign. 
Capital punishment was outlawed and free education was granted to all social classes except serfs. Russian roads were modernized and the first Russian loan banks for the merchant class were established. She is credited with financing the Baroque masterpieces led by Rastorelli, the architect, and construction of the Winter Palace, Peterhof Palace, and Smolny Cathedral during her reign. The University of Moscow was established along with the Imperial Academy of Arts. Catherine II, otherwise known as Catherine the Great, was arguably one of the most powerful and successful female rulers in Russia. Born in Prussia in 1729 to a ruling German family, she was arranged to marry her future husband, Peter III, at age 10. Despite Catherine having Germanic origins, she rigorously immersed herself into the Russian language and culture shortly after her arrival in Russia. She aligned herself as a Russian nationalist and befriended Elizabeth I. Peter III, however, was extremely unpopular within the royal community. Despite being the grandson of Peter the Great, he did not speak fluent Russian and led an extreme pro-Prussia agenda. After the death of Elizabeth I, he naturally became Tsar. During Peter's reign, Russian expansion ceased and foreign diplomacy deteriorated. In addition, he formulated an alliance with Russia. This regressing state of Russia evoked the court's attention and Catherine II slowly became the favorable opponent to her husband. With gathered support from Russian regiments, she led a coup. Within six months into his reign, Peter III was arrested and forced to sign over the throne. Eight days later after the coup, he was presumably assassinated. The westernization of Russia in the 19th and 20th century marks this era the golden age of Russia. Experimental sciences were launched in the Academy of Sciences and multiple publications were established such as the Physics and Medical Society, Society of Naturalists, Society of Russian History and Antiquities, and Society of Friends of Russian Literature. Catherine was heavily involved in the intellectual community, and in 1765, she helped establish the Free Economic Society. She was personal friends with Voltaire, and she also strove to attract leading European sciences, such as Euler, Pallas, and Lexel, into Russia. Her conquest led to the expansion of Russian commerce in the Black Sea, and her policies of economic liberalization stimulated economic growth as the free trade and open markets strengthened foreign relations. She supported respective freedom of the press and held a liberal policy towards migrants. The Statute on the Provinces of 1775 established schools, orphanages, and hospitals in Russia. The exclusive educational institution, Smolny Institute of Noble Maidens, was established for women throughout Europe. Her noted efforts to draw foreign interest via Western civilization and Russian enlightenment brought Russia into the modernizational trend seen in the 20th century. During the reign of Catherine the Great, economic improvement, scientific growth, social advancements, and territorial expansion were seen in the golden age of Russia. Yekaterina Tishkova was a noblewoman and later friend to Catherine the Great. Born in 1743 in Russian nobility, she received an unusual rigorous education. Raised by her uncle, she was exposed to foreign diplomacy at a young age as she studied her uncle's diplomatic letters. She was fluent in French, Russian, German, and Italian, and later studied mathematics at the University of Moscow. She befriended Catherine the Great and had major influence in helping her stage the coup of Peter III. Her intelligence stunned many notable figures throughout the world and was personal friends with Voltaire, Adam Smith, and Benjamin Franklin. She was invited to become the first female member of the American Philosophical Society, and she became the first appointed female director of the Petersburg Academy of Arts and Sciences. In addition, she aided in the establishment of the Imperial Russian Academy. In 1796, her achievements in the intellectual community were shortly halted after the death of Catherine the Great. The successor and son of Catherine, Paul I, banished Ekaterina from St. Petersburg as she was an active conspirator during the coup of Peter III. This exile was lifted in 1801, shortly after the death of the Tsar, and Ekaterina chose to remain in Moscow, where she continued to publish work up till her death in 1810. Her influence in the intellectual community redefined gender roles worldwide, and her contributions made to Russian society fixed her as one of the most groundbreaking leaders during the Russian Enlightenment era. She is credited for publishing the first dictionary in the Russian language along with personal dramatic works, monthly magazines, and journals. Ekaterina also translated other publications on travel, agriculture, and education that were all later integrated into Russian society. Though she was never empress, her many efforts in the literary arts and politics directly and indirectly contributed to the development seen in Russian society, depicting her as one of the most groundbreaking leaders of the Russian Enlightenment era.